My name is Ronan Gavoni. I'm one of the uh, music directors at Le Poisson Rouge, um, which, as you might know, is a flexible performance space slash nightclub in Greenwich Village, New York City, on Bleecker Street. Um, I'm also the founder <clears throat> and producer of a hybrid concert series called Wordless Music. Um, it's identified here as Worldless Music, which I don't think is... Um, <laughs> I, I didn't, I've heard this many times, also worthless music, but like wordless is um, how it's supposed to be. Um, and uh, on June 15th, um, just recently, Le Poisson Rouge uh, celebrated our second anniversary of being open. So I'm just here to tell you um, a little bit about our space and kind of our programming philosophy. Um, the first thing that uh, I usually tell people about Le Poisson Rouge, we were very fortunate to inherit um, a historic concert space. Um, from the 50s through um, the 80s, um, our space was another venue called the Village Gate, um, which I knew sort of very little about when I started working there, but um, hosted uh, appearances from everyone from Jimi Hendrix and John Coltrane and Miles Davis and Nina Simone through um, Edgar Varez did a premiere of a piece there, John Cage did a premiere of a piece there, uh, The Velvet Underground and Andy Warhol. Um, and we were lucky to meet um, the founder and owner of the Village Gate, a man named Art Delugoff, who passed away um, a couple of months ago. And through meeting him, um, you know, and partly through our own uh, musical proclivities, decided to make a space where every genre of music um, would be welcome. And I'll tell you a little bit about Wordless Music, um, the series, because it kind of um, guided some of our principles. Um, for a time, I worked for the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, and uh, at the time, I knew nothing about classical music. Um, I still can't read music, can't play an instrument, um, and yet I'm responsible for booking classical music at this place. Um, at the time, I was going to um, chamber music concerts regularly at Carnegie Hall, um, Alice Tully Hall, Lincoln Center. And afterward, I would go downtown to um, clubs and lofts and warehouse spaces um, in Brooklyn and on the Lower East Side. And I started wondering what exactly it was about a venue um, such as Alice Tully Hall, where you have um, two violins, a cello, and a viola. Um, and that is considered chamber music. And then you can go downtown to um, the Bowery Ballroom and you see a violinist, a cellist, a violist, and a laptop, and that is a completely different genre of music. Um, and so from day one at La Poisson Rouge, we sought to make it a fully flexible space. Um, we can seat about 250, 300 people um, in a cabaret-style seating for classical, new music, jazz performances. We can also remove all the tables and chairs and do um, fully standing room, 800 plus people for um, rock bands, DJs, parties, etc. cetera. Um, but really our calling card is kind of a mixture of both of these. Um, we've done a number, really always my, my very favorite performances um, that are large ensemble pieces, 35 plus musicians. Um, we put them in the middle of the room. We put tables and chairs completely surrounding them. Sometimes we do away with the tables and chairs completely um, and just invite people to sit on the floor or walk around or do what they want. Um, we have done presentations like this of um, Music for 18 Musicians. We did the New York premiere of Arvo Peretz's Fourth Symphony. Um, our friend Michael Gordon here, we did a wonderful performance of his piece Trance um, for Electric Chamber Ensemble. And um, really, you know, the most special nights at Le Poisson Rouge and for Wordless Music are always when you have, let's say, six or seven hundred people standing up, holding uh, cups of beer, um, and they're ready for an opening act to go on, but instead of it being another rock band, we have a string quartet or we have a pianist, and the idea is, um, you know, maybe the way that the classical music community has been seeking out young people um, has been a little inverted. To my mind, um, uptown institutions, especially in New York, are interested in a certain kind of young person. They're interested in someone who um, can join a board and can buy a gala ticket and um, donate, all of which is completely necessary. But we uh, very self-consciously go after what we consider to be 
um, a really monumentally underserved audience of young people in their 20s and 30s who um, go to MoMA and read The New Yorker and constantly seek out um, new sounds. And um, really, uh, for all of our concerts, which are two every night, seven nights a week, um, it's this kind of young music omnivore that uh, we're constantly looking for. Um, I see a yellow light, so let me see uh, <clears throat> what I can jump to. Oh, and so, you know, really, I heard um, earlier about um, crash arts in Boston, and I think that that example is very similar to our own. Um, we do not pay for any print advertising, um, mostly out of necessity, but um, uh, do all of our marketing and promotion online, um, through email and through our website. Um, all of our tickets are really um, no more than 10 or $20, and the whole space is subsidized by um, a bar, which is operated um, and, and goes throughout the entire show. In the two years I've been there, um, there's been exactly one show where the bar service halted. That was when um, the Arditi Quartet were playing a Harrison Burt whistle string quartet. We figured, you know, for the 25 minutes or so, let's just uh, give it a break. But, um, you know, really, um, everyone who performs at our space um, is made to understand that it's fundamentally um, a rock club structure financially. So that means whether it's Hilary Hahn or the Kronos Quartet or the Bang on a Can All Stars or um, Paul Simon or Anthony Braxton, all of whom have played there, um, it's basically a door deal, a percentage deal. Um, and really, um, our space is what allows us to do this because we can be fully transparent and say, there are 300 seats in this room. Um, you know, we're not a nonprofit, and you can set the ticket price. We'll give you almost everything from the door, and uh, this is our idea for how this art form can possibly be made um, sustainable in the near future. <laughs>